Yeah. Yep. Hi, welcome to this Cakecroft World tutorial. My name's Lynn Glacier, and I'm really excited to have the lovely Claire St. Quinton in the studio with Hi. us today. So Claire, what are you going to be making? So today I'm going to show you how to make this igloo cake. I'm going to show you how to carve a cake into this igloo shape, how to make these really cute little penguins, the snow scene, and of course the lights as well. And we've got a new product we want to show you on how to do some really amazing lettering on the board. And I think that's actually just been launched today. It went live today, so we're really excited about that. I just want to say before I hand over to Claire that even if you're not going to make this particular festive cake this Christmas, you're going to learn so many different techniques so stay tuned because I think it will really help your cake decorating skills especially if you're a beginner so Claire what are we going to do first okay so what we're going to do Lynn if I just give that to yep. you we're going to get straight into it right oh let's just get rid of these snowballs that rolled off okay so what I've got here is I have got two eight inch cakes eight inch round um, and we baked them quite deep and I've already sandwiched them onto an eight inch hard board and um, filled them with some buttercream so I've put it on a turntable and a turntable is going to be really important for you and if you invest in one it's really really great it helps with a lot of things and I'm going to show you now so we're going to get straight in then with yep. carving the igloo so what we do is I've got a normal bread knife or carving knife and I'm going to keep it on one side of the cake and I'm going to angle it remember when you're cutting that you're creating a dome shape not a cone shape so you need to actually bring it round and curve it round as you're cutting so I'm going to start from the center and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to cut round and down like so. Then I turn the turntable and then I start to cut round and down like that. And that is literally what you do. You just keep going round and round and going down like so. So while Claire's doing that, I just want to talk tiny, just a little while about the type of cake mix. You want quite a firm cake mix, not a Victoria sponge, because what would happen is that would keep crumbling. And as you're cutting, you carve and it gets smaller and smaller because you can you can keep carving, but you can't add it back on. Exactly. It's no. really easy, isn't it? To just think, yeah, oh, you can't carve, yeah. can't you? So Claire's using a Satina branded cake mix. There's about 22, I think there's about 22 flavours and they're absolutely fantastic because most of them you add water to. A couple of them you add water and oil to like the toffee mixtures etc um, and they create a beautifully delicious moist cake mix that carves really well um, so they come looking like this and this one's actually a lemon one but they're super easy to use then I just quickly want to talk about rich fruit cake because the traditional cake at Christmas is still rich fruit cake it isn't is it? for a and lot of people we yeah. actually do do we even do a luxury rich fruit cake mix which you just add water to but I wouldn't carve a rich fruit cake would you I wouldn't really it's it's a bit too firm really to carve isn't right. it but you've got a great idea haven't yeah. you if you want to do a rich fruit cake you can get hold of these tins they come in three different sizes I love these <laughs> they're really good and I always line a tin if I'm doing a rich fruit cake in it. So how I would do that is just grease the tin and then get quite a few thin strips of grease proof and just crisscross them in the tin, then pop your rich fruit cake inside. Lovely. <coughs> She's super quick, Claire. I know. You've, you've nearly finished done. while I'm no, talking. So, um, as you can, you can do what you've done, Lynn, is you yep. can use the tins. If you do go down the carving method, as you can see, it took me, what, two minutes to do? Yep. Okay, so now it's done, we're going to start putting the buttercream on it. But yep. obviously, before we do that, then we want to just clear it away, don't right. we? Right. So I'm just going to pass the cake over to yep. you there. Thank you. Okay. There. Now, I've got a tip for you. Um, when you're carving cakes, obviously, you do make a mess. So what I've got, you can't see it, but down here... I have got a bin and it just makes it really, really quick and simple, doesn't it, Lynn? Yeah, have let me a get bin by you. you all the time and all you need to do is just shove it all in. That's if you don't want to eat it. But we've been good, so we're not eating it today, are we, Lynn? We're going to shove it all in the Super bin. Super quick tidy up here going on. Yeah. And right, then we're let's going get rid to of that. wipe it down. Thank you. Sorry, I've made quite a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, actually, another tip for you if you have a scraper, I don't want to make too much of a noise, but a scraper straight in and down into the bin. Right, I think we go there. Okay, right. right. What I've got here is I've got some vanilla frosting, which I'm going to cover the cake in. Do you want this back? Yes, please, yeah. Lynn. I will have that back. I'll just give it a... Oh. Just wipe a bit of buttercream off it. Sorry, I'm very messy. That's all right. There you go. Okay. Right. Right, so I am going to cover the cake now 
in some frosting. Um, and this is a great frosting, isn't it, Lynn? Because you can cover it in buttercream, but the great thing about this frosting is it's oil-based, isn't it? It is. It's another Satina product. Um, I think, again, we've got quite a few flavours. I can't even remember them. Lemon, vanilla. I think we've got um, so salted, salted, salted caramel. caramel delicious delicious. flavours. But the great thing is, because they're oil-based, you don't have to refrigerate the cake. It doesn't matter too much in the winter, but in the summer when it's really hot, I think that becomes a real problem with buttercream, that you can't fit your cakes in the fridge. Right, okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you th this technique, um, and whilst I'm doing that, Lynn, yeah. would you mind getting some satina sugar paste yeah. and kneading it for me? Right, another reason why it's really, really great to have the, um, the cake on a turntable in when you're ganashing or buttercreaming a cake, especially a carved one like this, where it's nice and curved, just get your buttercream or your frosting on top, and again, use the turntable, so keep your hand in one position, like that, use the turntable, and it get, gives it a really, really smooth, consistent finish. It doesn't matter too much for this kind of cake because it's we're going to turn it into an igloo and, it, and yep. we're going to create a massive snow scene on it. So it doesn't have to be the sugar paste doesn't have to be perfect, but it's always good practice to try and implement these techniques. Now, Lynn, you're kneading that, yeah, uh, for me because you need it to be nice and soft, don't we? Yeah, that's a um, a really handy tip when you get your sugar paste out of the pot. Satina actually comes in, it's like this, and it comes in a pot. It's um, flavoured subtly with vanilla flavouring, isn't it? And you can even smell the vanilla. Oh, it's it delicious. Smell, I know, it smells like a lot of my customers, when I hand their cakes over, the first thing they say is how, how nice it smells. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's very, very vanilla -y. But it's really important you give it a good need. Yeah, okay. And that goes for all sugar paste. All sugar paste, yeah. yeah. It'll be, you it'll go. just make your life a lot easier when it comes to covering the kegs if you've kneaded it really yeah. soft. Right, there you go. Okay, so how are you getting on with that, Lynn? That's done. Okay, lovely. I'll just put the lid on this, pop it to one side. So I'm going to take the cake off the turntable now. I've finished with the turntable, thank you. Can get rid of that? I'm not used to having a little helper next to me. <laughs> okay, um, have we got a cloth in? I just want to wipe this you down go. a little bit, thank you. Just because I don't want to get crumbs in my sugar paste. There you go. Oh, sorry, thank you. Okay, so now Lynn's very kindly kneaded that for me. It will be very easy for me to roll it out. Okay, so if you haven't got a non-slip surface, I am just gonna dry that up a bit, Lynn, because I don't want it to stick. You must make sure you've got no moisture anywhere because it will stick and it'll make your life a lot difficult. Okay, so just get a little bit of icing sugar and just pop that on the surface and get uh, a rolling pin. And all you do is you start to roll out and then make sure you turn it like that and it, so it's non-slip. Keep turning as you roll. So to roll out again and then just keep turning. Okay, and then we turn again. And I'm just gonna show you these. So these are... Marzipan spaces. Marzipan spaces. <laughs> um, if you're not confident about rolling out to the right thickness, um, and the thickness is about five millimeters, usually when covering a cake, you can use these spaces and these are the right thickness. They actually come, if you turn it the other way, they actually come in yeah. two thicknesses. They're really, not so much for this cake because it's um, igloo and it, it's snow, but if you were doing a wedding cake where you've got to have the cake really level every single tier, they're a really good little product to use. They are, yeah. So, I think well, I've got a bit of a gap now while Claire's doing that. So while um, Claire's doing that, I'll just tell you a little bit about Cakecraft World. We've got a website, cakecraftworld.co.uk. And I think we've got about, um, just outside that door, you can walk out into the warehouse and we've got about 9,000 cake decorating and baking products. But we don't just sell cake decorating products. If you go onto the front page, we've got a project section. And in there, there's hundreds of cake tutorials and videos. So when you pop over to the website, one more thing, join our newsletter, subscribe to the newsletter because we send out a newsletter every single week. And the kind of thing on the newsletter, it's got offers, new products, what's going on in the industry, and lots of cake projects. So, um, yeah, when you get a minute, check us out. I've, I'm going to keep talking. We're right, no, Chatterboxes, aren't I know. we? Uh, did you say, Lynn, I don't know if you said about um, questions at the end of the... Uh, yes, you can send us in questions and we'll try and answer them. At the end of and the video. And one more thing. Um, we're offering a promotional code. It's igloo, 
just igloo put it in at the checkout and you can get 10 percent off all the products okay right now i've rolled that out i'm ready to cover my cake so i always have the cake on my right hand side because i'm left-handed because i like to control the rolling pin and the sugar paste with my dominant hand my left hand so um what i'm going to do this is obviously not sticking to which is what you want you want it nice and loose um, and then I'm going to fold it over my rolling pin. And this is a really good tip for you. Never drag your sugar paste to the cake. Always bring the cake to your sugar paste. So I'm going to slide that in because otherwise you risk tearing it. And then you get that horrible cracking, what I call elephant skin. And then all you do, very simply, is just bring it over and then roll it and you're on. And what we do to start with is we just start smoothing it over like that make sure you haven't got any air bu bubbles in so just if you have got any air bubbles in just lift it up to sort of smooth them out okay so that's the first thing and then what we do is this is actually a really really easy shape to cover isn't it because that's great for beginners isn't it, it? is yeah. because we haven't got a straight side it's when you've got a straight side that you tend to have a lot of gathering of sugar paste don't but you? you could you can still explain can't you I think people want to know, isn't it? When they get this, yeah, it's, it's, how do you yeah, get rid of it? Exactly. Yeah. So all you do is you lift it up and smooth it down and then lift it and smooth it. I'm don't going to stretch at all. Don't do stretch you? it. No. I'm going to show you another one because I've got one around the back here. So can you see I've got quite a gathering of sugar paste here? So lift and smooth. And another really good tip for you, smooth down. Don't pu pull it down because what you're going to do there is you're probably going to end up having a tear in your sugar paste here. So smooth down bit by bit and then lift and smooth until all the way around. You should have a nice smooth cake like that. That's okay. perfect. Looks good, doesn't yeah. it? So I'm just going to take a little palette knife that I've got here. I mean, a kitchen knife, palette knife is fine. Or even a pizza cutter is a really good tool to use. And I'm going to cut off my excess sugar paste all the way around. It's quite important, isn't it, Claire, not to cut too close because no. it sort of shrinks up a it bit, does, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you'll end up seeing the cake board underneath and maybe even a little bit of the cake. So it's better to cut off a little bit too much. Uh, sorry, um, have a little bit too much left than cut off too much. So you can see I've got a little bit of excess there. But that's fine because what we do now is we smooth it. Actually, Lynn, I wouldn't mind uh, using the turntable again. Would you yeah. mind bringing the turntable back in again? Sorry about that. Um, it's just whilst I smooth it. So you've got a couple of options on the smoothers. I'm just going to pop this on the turntable. Okay, right, like that. So we've got a normal, this is like a normal standard smoother. And these are great for going round, smoothing the cake. And then you can just smooth the bottom of it like that. These are just like your standard smoothers. But we've also got these. These are called cake smoothies. And what's brilliant about these, it's the shape of them, isn't it? So they're yeah, really bendy. So you've got three different sizes, haven't you? And especially if you're going on an indent curve, you can really like push it in and smooth it. And they're great for car cakes, bottle cakes, any kind of shaped cake, aren't yeah. they? Where you just want to smooth it round. And you've got that flexibility. So use it in your hands to smooth it. And then... Bring it round. I'm not too worried at this stage about getting it perfect because, um, and this is one of the great things about this cake, isn't it? It doesn't need to be perfect. Well, at the end of the day, we're actually going to sprinkle We're just going to throw a load of glitter it, on it. Yeah, we're going to turn it into a magical snow scene. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's yep. kind of smooth enough. Okay, so now we're going to turn this dome into an igloo. Um, so what I've got is I've got what we call a Dresden tool. Do you want to bring that one in? Can yeah, I will Claire? do actually. Yeah, just so you can actually see what it is I'm doing. Yeah. There you go. Do you want to put it? Yeah, that's what that's what we're that's what we're going to do. Doing now. Okay. Um, so normally when you're cake decorating in your own home or studio, you yeah. do everything to you, don't yeah. you? So obviously I need to do it to you guys watching. So I'm going to do this away from me. So just please bear with me. So um, what you do is you take one end of the Dresden tool. There's a thin end and a thick end. Use whichever end you want, depending on um, how sort of wider indentation you want to create. I like I use the wider end because I quite like the clunky look of it. So f about an inch up, you just um, put your dressing tool in 
and hold your hand completely steady or as steady as you can and turn the turntable. This is another great reason to have a turntable. Make it work for you. Turn the turntable until you get to the other end. This is a great little tool, isn't it, to have in your cupboard as well or drawer because you can use it for modelling. I Can't use mine yeah. all the time. And for leaf veining. Uh, leaf veining, yeah. modelling. Uh, and we're actually going to use the tool when we make the penguins shortly, aren't we? So yeah. um, I'm going to use it to make penguin feet. <laughs> so, so you'll see that soon. Now, I've done two. And then I'm going to um, pass it over to, for Lynn to do to finish in a second. But I just want to show you how to do the uprights. So just take your tool and just go up like that. Also, Claire, really shouldn't you, you should do this the night before. Yeah, this yeah. is the basically. So I'm not going to show you any more because that's basically all you do. You just keep going up and up and round. Circles. Uh, and, and then yeah. down. And then, um, but we have made one yesterday. Two reasons. One is because you don't want to be watching us do all this. Um, it's very simple. But also, it's nice and firm, isn't it? And it, you want to keep it nice and firm um, and do it the day before because yeah. it makes it a lot easier to handle. Yep. Right, Lynn, would you mind getting oh, me the you blue? Need the don't you? Yeah. So what Lynn's got for me is some um, sugar flare dust in glacier blue. Yeah. Um, and she's got a brush. And what I'm going to do is show you how to kind of turn the igloo into more like a realistic icy kind of look. So we've got some of the dust here and we've, I'm just going to pop that there so you can see what we're using. Um, and a tip for you, you can add and build, but you can't take it off once it's on there. So once you've got it on your brush, just dab it onto a piece of kitchen roll just to take it off again so your brush isn't too loaded. And then we just brush it round, all the way around the, each of the indentations and then up as well, like that. Okay, and that's really simple, isn't it? I mean, yeah. what I'm going to do now is I'm going, Lynn, would you do that for me? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I've um, just, while Claire's been doing that, I've been needing some modelling paste because the next thing you'll do is make I'm the... I'm going to make, show you how to make yeah. the doll. That's a bit sticky, you might need some right, okay. flour with that. So yeah, if Lynn's just going to finish that for me, and I'm just going to show you how to how I made this doll. This, here's one I made earlier, uh, again, because it needs to set. So I've got some modelling paste here uh, to do the door. Can you actually use sugar paste for that? Right, Claire? you can. Um, so you can use normal sugar paste, which is what we um, have covered the cake with. The only thing I would say is if you do that, um, just do it a few days beforehand. Really give it a chance to set. One, because it is quite soft. And two, because... Um, we're going to actually stand a penguin on top of the door because he's going to be hanging his Christmas lights. So we want, you know, we want it, it needs to be nice and firm. Um, so because I want to sort of make this and get it nice and firm and show you straight away, I'm using modelling paste, so it sets a lot quicker. It's a lot of a, it's a stronger paste. So here's what we do. Um, I've got some corn flour here. So when you're rolling out sugar paste and covering cakes, always use icing sugar. When you're modelling, use corn flour. So I'm just going to put a little bit of corn flour on there because it's a little bit sticky where Li Lynn's made it nice and warm from kneading it. Okay. Uh, in terms of amount for what we've done, we've got an eight inch, eight, an eight inch igloo. Um, I'm going to say about that much. Now, what do you reckon? That's like a small... 150 grams. I was going to talk about it in ball size. <laughs> tennis ball. <laughs> a tennis ball. <laughs> tennis ball. About 150 grams, but I do it all in ball size. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so you roll it... So you get it into a ball to start with, and then you roll it into, I suppose, a thick sausage. And then what we do, so it's like that, is we take a rolling pin... And we just roll it so it's got a flat top like that. But you don't want to roll it too thin. You still need it quite thick. So I'm just going to go over it again. And what you want, you want it so that side and that side are both flat. It looks a bit like a bar of soap, I think. <laughs> and then um, I'm just going to use my hands just to flatten the ends. You can cut the ends off with a knife or you can use your hands just to flatten the ends like that. Okay, so that's what we start with. I'm going to race to get this You're done. You're racing, I but know. you don't need to. No, I'm not okay. done. All right, I'm trying to get this done before you finish <laughs> up. Yeah. Don't worry. Right. So then that Dresden tool again. So what we do is we have our, our piece of sugar paste like this. We take our Dresden tool 
and we want to put an indentation in the center of it going across like that but make sure you do the sides as well like this you're all right lynn don't worry i know i'm sure <laughs> calm down this isn't as going to be as neat <laughs> as you want it i know it isn't <laughs> that's all right okay and then you do one on the side and then one on the other side like that okay so we've got an indentation in the center and one either side okay and then what we do is we go across so we do one along there and then one on that side so you're alternating and then on this one we go either side of that one you, uh, you'll see it, it might i might not be talking much sense but hopefully it looks like i'm make, making sense by looking at it you're creating like a brick effect like that and then now you've done that all you do like magic is Whew. it. Oh, look at that. I know, look we can finish it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, look, I've got my little door, and there we have it. Now, here's one we made earlier. Oh, so, I'll put that one out of the way. Um, and this is one that's nice and firm. And also, Lynn has also dusted <sighs> it with the blue. Okay. So, so, now we're on to this new product that we're actually launching today. This is really exciting. It and I is, know that everyone yeah. else is going to be really excited about this. Yeah. I know that I was when you showed it to me. So it's called Fun Fonts. I have to, because it's new today, I might have to read it. Yeah, it's no, Fun Fonts to get it right. Um, 52 pieces, upper and lower case le letter stamping kit. Yeah. That's what's brilliant about this yeah. is it's upper and lower case yeah. all in one kit. But there's a couple of things we really like about this. And one, let's just get them all out. So you've got your lower case and upper case. And this sounds really silly, but we love the fact it comes in a box and every single letter it's labeled on the box. Um, because it's italic, it's quite difficult. When the letters are all out of the box, it's quite difficult. You can't to read them, no. can you? <laughs> but the other great thing is it's actually got the letter on as well. So that's great. So Yeah, and it's got little handles, hasn't it? Do you it? want to roll out? I'm going to demonstrate this now. Now, we've already used it on our board because um, to do it live is quite time consuming yeah. and, um, and quite nerve wracking, to be fair. Right. <laughs> Let's get those out of the way. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate um, a bit that's not on the board just to show you so how to So if you just roll it. that. Okay, oh, so okay. this is just a bit of sugar paste, which is what um, Lynn covered the board with. So I'm just going to roll a little bit out just to demonstrate how to use them. Right, Lynn, what word are you doing? Well, let's just do the first one there. But the most important thing is that you must use these stamps when your sugar paste is soft. Yes, so do your stamps as soon as you've covered yep. the board. You can also um, do it on sides of cakes as well. You can sort of push it into the sides to do yep. names. And so, okay, so what have we got here? L. L. Right, I'm going to do it upside down, so I'm going to do it towards the camera. Here you go. Okay, so... Um, each individual letter has got its own handle on it and all you do is place it on where you want it to be and then just press it in like that and then E, make sure it's the right way around, press it in and then finally T, press it in. Okay, so what you've done Lynn is you've got some rejuvenator there haven't you? Yeah, and we're just adding it into, I'm just getting a nice fine brush for you. Lovely, thank Lovely. you. Um, so this is rejuvenator. If you, it's basically like a, an alcoholic. It's like yeah. a spirit, isn't it? Um, if you haven't got rejuvenator, you can use gin or vodka as long as it's a clear liquid. Um, and all that does is it turns all of these powders into paint. And what's great about the liquid uh, the, using this is it evaporates and dries straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, Claire, that brush isn't good enough. <laughs> all right, well, no, no, no. Shall I give it a go? Go and give it a go. It's not, it's a go. not fine it's enough. Right, we're not putting it on the real cake. It's only, it's only to right. demonstrate. The, the really nice important thing about painting is you have to have a really, what a is really this brush, good brush. <laughs> not you this do, do, you want, do you want me to go and get you one? No, it's fine because we're just demonstrating. So you have a really fine brush, not a frayed one. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't shake. I was so sure we had a really don't nice worry. brush. Look at me shaking. And all you do is you paint it <laughs> like that. But let, me, let me get you a fine no, brush. No, it's fine. <laughs> She's so stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, I can do it. <laughs> but you get the picture. Yeah, right? so you have a really fine brush and then just take your time. And, and I'm paint. shaking because we are live. <laughs> so don't worry. Normally you would be. Anyway, here's what we made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's Off lovely camera. Beauty, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then you take your time painting. And you get that wonderful. I mean, we've put Let It Snow. Um, you can do all sorts, can't you? Well, Season actually, three. oh, actually, that might be a good time to show this. Yeah, we just wanted to. So we were 
playing around with them. And I just do just want to show you, there's another cake we did in gold with Season's Greetings on. And actually this cake, we're working on this project at the moment. So this is actually going to be on the website, I would say in about 10 days. So if you go on, you can see exactly how we did this. But it's beautiful, isn't it? I, I love, love them. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. And I, I just will amazing. say that was done with um, the pure gold. And again, using Should the rejuvenator to turn it into yeah. a paint and then it just, really, it just dries really, really well. really love them. Okay. Right. So uh, now we're going to put it all together, aren't we? Yeah. So we've got our board, uh, we've got our igloo and we've got our door. So uh, now we're going to put it all on the board. Sorry. Um, so I'm just going to use a bit more of this frosting to actually stick it onto the board. And I need Let's to turn that around for you. Thank you. I just need to make sure that I place it in the right place so I don't cover the let yeah. it snow and I've got room for my door. So I'm just going to put a little bit at the back of the board here. You can use um, buttercream, royal icing, ganache, anything like that, but just to help it stick so it doesn't slide around. And because we Let made this cake yesterday, it's nice and firm to the touch. So I can just pick it up. I know oh, it's really easy to. Yeah, it is. So I'm just going right, to, there's, no right, there's no front or back to this, is there no. either? So I'm just going to place it on like that. Uh, and then you can move it, you can slide it around because you've got the buttercream on there. Whilst it's still soft, you can slide it around in position until it sets. And then I will just have some edible glue. I think I've got some over here, haven't I? Yeah, just to stick the door on. So that's my igloo. And then I've just got some edible glue on a brush. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the door just to make sure that stays in position. So on there and on the back. Okay. And then where should I put him? The back over there. Over here. Over, there, like over here. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Lovely. Perfect. So there we go. Right. So now we have an igloo. Uh, we need to start adding Yay. some penguins. Penguins. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we've already made some penguins in advance, which are here. And, but I'm going to show you how to make one of them. Because once you've made one, you can make them all, can't you? Yeah, which one are you going to do? Right, so I'm going to do this one here. Um, and the, it's the one holding the snowball. So basically, we've kind of designed it so they're having a snowball fight and sledging and hanging up Christmas lights. So I'm going to do the one that's throwing the snowballs. Okay. So I just want to use you using modelling paste for that, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, I'm using this Renshaw modelling paste in black. Um, I would highly recommend that you use this as opposed to sugar paste. It dries, it's really strong, it dries yeah. quite quickly. Should we move that out of the way? Yeah, let's move that out of the way. Right, so to make the penguins, you take some of your paste, and again, I'm gonna do this in bowl size rather than gram size. Okay. It's a ping, ping, no, ping, ping pong ball. I think ping pong, ping pong ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can do your penguins as big as you like. But for me, for what I'm doing for this cake, do you think that's a ping pong ball? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. So a ping pong ball, right? And then get it really kneaded so you don't have any lines and creases. And to do that, I mean, you've already kneaded it for me should anyway. Should we just you? bring this one in? So yeah. That, so you can see. It's quite sweet because you, you can see, can't you, what you're going to make? The one that we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So I, I've kneaded that enough now that you don't have any cracks in it. So you have it into a simple bowl, and this is really, really easy. All you do is, so you've got the center here, and then you just go to one side and just press just press on it. Just turn it around a little bit so you, it's all the so way So it's around. like a Russian doll it, shape. That is exactly it. Yeah. I would describe it as being the Russian doll. So like that, and then, or a pair. Yeah. So you've got its belly and his head, and that is really, really simple, and that's your body done. So there's no separate head and separate body. It's all in one, okay? And then I'm going to do the wings. They are wings, aren't they? Yeah, when do you No, they're it? not. They're flippers. Flippers, flippers, I think. Fli I think they're flippers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they are. They're wings or flippers. Did you put these things? We're doing these things, right. aren't we? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, so to do these, do, do we have... A, oh, no, we do have the cutters, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So... Um, I'm doing, the, I'm doing the flippers first because they're in black, so I want to get all the black using out there. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Did I throw you then? Cause yeah, I, I thought you were going to do the, the body. Yeah, I know. No, I know. Everything up no I'm body. doing it in black whilst we've got the black out. So I'm gonna, it doesn't matter what audio, you know, body first, obviously, but then eyes, beak, everything, it doesn't really matter. 
Right, so what I've done, and again, this is why you need to use the modelling paste because we want to roll this quite thin. And you, it, you can use sugar paste, can't you, Lynn? But it'd be quite a clunky, um, yeah. clunky kind of penguin. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a set of rose petal cutters. Um, and, you, you know, not everybody has these um, in their sort of cake decorating tools. So you can do it freehand, can't you? Yeah. But I just think that if you use these, it just makes it well, sort of a professional finish yeah. and more of a finished look. And we're going to use them for the belly and for the wings. So I've got a smaller one, and I'm just going to cut a couple of wings out. <laughs> wings, flippers. 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 I don't know what they're called. Okay, so here's a couple like that. Right, what I actually want to do is I want to lengthen them a little bit so he can hold the snowball. So all I'm doing is I'm just stretching it a little bit like that. So it's just a little bit longer, just freehand. And then the same here. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna take some glue. That's edible glue, isn't it? Edible glue. Yep. Um, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on either side, like that. And then I'm gonna put one of the wings with a point facing down, like that, because he's gonna be holding a snowball here. And then I'm gonna put one of the wings facing up, like he's ready an arm to throw it at his sibling, like that, okay? Right, now I'm done with the black, I am done with the black. Yeah, I'm done with the black now. So I'm just gonna wipe my fingers. The black is quite, um, concentrated so you do get messy fingers okay so now i'm going to take some white you want white don't you yeah yeah actually whilst you're doing it whilst there. oh have you got it there oh okay yeah. lovely thank you sorry i didn't see that <laughs> okay so now i'm going to do the uh belly 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 <laughs> Flippers, belly. Flippers, belly. <laughs> Tell me, I don't know. We don't know the uh, <laughs> proper names for penguins bits, do we? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to roll this. Uh, where's my cornflower? It's a bit sticky, so I just put a bit of cornflower down. And I'm just going to roll a little bit of this out. Again, do it quite thin. I don't know how well the camera can see it, but I'm going to say it's about a millimetre thickness. There we go, that'll do. So we've got a bit of white there. And then using the same rose petal cutters... I'm gonna pick one uh, that's the right size for my penguin's belly and I'm just gonna cut it out. And then and because I don't want that point on it because it's gonna go up to its neck, I'm just gonna cut it using, I mean, I'm using a craft knife. I've gotta be very careful. A kitchen knife will do. Um, thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Get it. Take it out. Take it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you've just screwed up. <laughs> Retake. <laughs> We're just going to remake the belly. <laughs> I'm right. so sorry. There you go. When Lynn, when Lynn took the knife out, I just grabbed all the sugar paste. <laughs> and I just screwed it up into a ball. Oh, well. Well, there's our first error, Lynn. Right. Right. Okay. Luckily, it didn't take that long. Okay. In case you weren't watching the first time, I'll do it again. Right. Cut it. Take the knife. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Cut the end off. Hand knife back to Lynn before I hurt myself. <laughs> okay, right. So now I've got its belly. I'm just going to tap the sides a bit in case there's any roughness of where it was cut. Okay, and then I take a little bit of glue on one side. And then I'm going to pop it on. So it's like the narrow end towards the top. And it's going to be just on his belly there, just underneath. Like that. How cute is that? So he's already starting to look like a penguin, isn't he? And there we go. Okay. So I've got his belly and his flippers. Now we're going to do the um, feet and beak. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let so, me get rid of this for you. Let's thank you. you. So we've got some the same again. We've got some modelling paste here. Um, but Lynn's kindly covered it for, coloured it for me already in orange. So we've got a nice orange colour here to do the beak and the feet. So to do the beak, what you do, I'm just going to lean in a bit so you can see it because I want you to get a, a good close up on this, is you get a, a pea size amount, petit pois, small pea, um, and then get some, my fingers are a bit sticky, so whenever your fingers are sticky, just dab them into a cornflower pouch and instantly they're like non-slip, non-stick rather. So I'm going to create a triangle to make the beak, it's very simple, and I just use three pre pressure points of my four, finger, four fingers and my thumb to make a triangle and then I flatten it 
and then I do it again, press and flatten, press and flatten. And there you've got like a nice little chunky sort of triangle. Then I take that Dresden tool again and I use it to make the opening of the beak, of the mouth. So I use a small end, which is a lot sharper, and I just put one line there and one line there, like that. And then yes. all I do then is I use um, some edible glue, if you go <laughs> right in front of me, and just place that on there. And then you just want to place the beak on the penguin, like that. I can't see him because he's away from me, but hopefully he's, <laughs> he's stuck on mine. It looks like a penguin. Okay, and now for the feet. The feet are really easy. So again, a small size, probably about the same amount, about a petty size amount. Roll it into a ball. And then what you do is you then roll it. So it's like a tic-tac. Yeah. And then Dresden tool again, sharp end. And what you do is you press on one side and press on the other. And then you press in. So you sort of flatten it. So you squash it like that. So there's one, and then same again. So a small ball, roll it into a tic-tac shape, press one side and the other like that, and then flatten it like that. So we've got these two little feet, okay? And then I'm gonna just put some glue on them, like that. I'll take this out of the way, okay, thank you. Like so. So then what I actually do is I line the feet up like this or like on the table and then I press, press them in like that. So there we have our penguin, our eyeless penguin, but our penguin, yep. pretty much with his feet looking good. Right, eyes. Yep, so here we've got some Wilton, look, they're lovely mini eye sprinkles. They're really funny. They are cute. They um, And they just make it so much easier. I mean, you can, of course, roll icing into tiny little circles and get like an edible black edible pen and sort of dot it on but these are just make it so much easier um and they really give the penguin character i'll show you let's put some eyes on him so i just put a little bit of glue and then one eye and then the other eye there we go look at that isn't he cute <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Now, um, so now I want to have him holding some snowballs. These are some little snowballs here that we already have. They're white mimosa sprinkles. Mimosa sprinkles. Um, and they're really light. So um, rather than a, a ball of sugar paste. So they're really good for sort of, if you want them like this to stick on, that they don't have much weight to them. So all I'm going to do is I've just put a little bit of glue on each of the wings, flippers, and then press one in and press the other one in like that. So basically once once people know how to make one, you can make all the others. Exactly, I mean, if yeah, you look if you at these, they're all the same, but it's just some of them are going like this because they're, they're doing, like they're slide, sledging down the igloo. Some yep. are doing this because they're holding up the lights. Some are doing this because they're being hit by a snowball. Yep. But the body is the same, the belly's the same, the beaks and feet are the same. It's just where you, yeah, you do your flippers. Brilliant. <laughs> so. So shall I bring the cake back in? Yeah, so now that we've... Um, oh, just watch it, Lynn, because we're... All right, yeah. No, you're all right, don't worry. Oh, Nearly <laughs> took the cake off the board. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> right, so now that we've got... I've showed you how to do one penguin. We've already got some that we made earlier. We're going to get these on the board, aren't we? Yeah. Right, so... Let's clear this up for you. That's all right. So let's put them over here. Sorry. Right, now, where shall we put them? We want them where people can see them. Do you want this one in front of you as yeah. well, so you can see, Let's actually? See. I've lost my glue brush, Lynn. Oh, it's oh, here. This one. <laughs> right, so I'm going to put the sledging penguin on first. So we just put a little bit of edible glue underneath the sledge and then stick him on so he's sledging down like that. Okay. I mean, you can put the penguins wherever you want. But this is just how we're going to do it. And then this guy here, he's got his, his uh, flippers up because he doesn't want to get hit by a s snowball. Just, just another handy hint. If you haven't got um, any edible glue, you can actually take some soft sugar paste and just mix a little bit of water, probably on the counter, just mix with a palette knife some water into it, and still it until it gets really sticky. And you can use that, can't you, to stick them on as yeah, well? Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah. Sugar paste or modelling paste. Yeah, just sort of water it down a bit. Yeah. Right, I'm going to put him here like that. 
and then he's going to be hanging up the Christmas lights. So he's the one that I'm going to put on the door. Right. Uh, on the door. Yeah, no, it is a door, isn't it? <laughs> on the door here. So he's <laughs> facing that way because he's actually going to be hanging the lights up like that. So now we've got... Might as well, should we stick Shall we stick on him on yeah, as well? Yeah, stick Otherwise that one as well. on his own, isn't he? Yeah. Right, let's stick him on as well. Where should we put him? Should we put him here? Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Right. So now we've got our penguins on. Uh, the next thing we are going to do is lights. Should we just show them the lights? Yeah. There we go. So these lights are great because it's re they're really, really simple, but they're really, really effective. And you can kind of hang them over the cake however you want. Okay. Right, I'll get that one out of the way now. It's all right. So, um, Lynn, you've already very kindly helped me out with this, haven't you? Because it's, yes. it's quite time consuming on the so camera. So we're doing the lights first. Let's do the yeah. lights first. So, again, this is modelling paste, isn't it? It's modelling paste and I've already coloured it with um, pro gels, with rainbow dust pro gels in some lovely bright colours. They're it's really e vibrant. It's easy, isn't it? You just, um, they come in a tube, making it really easy to use. So you just pop a bit into the icing and just keep kneading the icing until it's all evenly coloured. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And the, you've achieved the colour that you want. So all you do um, is I'm going to do a couple, Lynn. Should I, should I make some as well? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to, okay. and then you can sort of... Crack on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I move on to the next bit. Okay. So again, it's just a, a, a pea sized amount in your hand. And then all you do is you just one end roll it yep. and you're just kind of making a cone shape if you like. Okay. Or a teardrop shape like that. And then that's it. Right. Just, so if you can just make a few of them, is that all right then? Yep. So, and I'm going to alternate the colors. So if you just make a selection yep. of all the colors. Lovely. Okay. Now, whilst Lynn is making the lights, I am going to make the actual string that the lights will hang from. And I'm using modeling paste for this. If you use sugar paste, you just can't roll it out quite so thin and mm. it will it'll probably break as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm using a little bit of modeling paste. I've got a feeling these are all going to be different sizes. So don't worry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start by making this really, really nice and pliable. And I'm going to start rolling. And I'm, to start off with, I'm just rolling with my hands, like you would normally, like this. And because I want it nice and thin, I've really made it quite pliable. And it, it's a lot quicker to do. Now, I've got a tip for you. When rolling out anything like this, take a smoother, like this, just a standard smoother, and then if you actually use that to roll it and just put a bit of pressure on it, what happens is that rolls it into like, it's really consistent and even and the whole way along. Otherwise, if you just do it by your fingers like this, you end up having sort of a bit uneven. You're right <laughs> over there, Lynn. different shape. I'm feeling you're under, panicking, you're I'm under panicking. pressure. How many do you need? Uh, I know, well, I'll right. let you know. I'll right. let you know. Okay. I I'll need just... a, another yellow one and another green one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. We're fine. Right, so I just want to do this a little bit thinner. Now, because um, I want it nice and thin and because it is quite time consuming, Lynn has already rolled me one out over here and she's popped it into a little uh, airtight bag just to keep it nice and subtle so it doesn't um, break. So I'm actually going to put this on the cake now, Lynn. Is that all right? Yeah. So, and then I'll be wanting them lights. Right. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Don't worry. Done. Okay, so I'm going to bring this so you can see it. Now, again, how you attach the lights is up to you. The way I wanted to do it was that this little guy here is trying to hang the lights up and they're all getting in a tangled knot. So what I do is take some glue and I'm going to put a little bit of glue down on the bottom here, which is where the lights are going to sort of start at the bottom. Then I'm going to put a little bit of glue over him because I know that that's where I want them to, to sort of hang over. And then I'm going to bring it onto the um, actual cake. So rather than paint the swag, I'm just going to, because that kind of risks, you know, you, don't, you end up maybe getting a little bit of black on there the way you don't quite want it. I'm just going to paint the little dots where I want it to sort of stop at the top. You'll see, it'll make sense as I put them on. Okay, so... What I do then is I take a bit of my light string and I'm going to put a little bit down here, which is where this, it starts, in a little bit of a pile. And then I'm going to put them over him like this because he's getting himself all in a tangle like that. And then I'm going to press where I put my first bit of glue like that. And then I'm going to let it hang in like a swag. 
and I'm going to go to where I put my next bit of glue and at this point I'm actually just going to cut that off because I haven't got enough length to do the next one so I can use this so I'm just going to put a little bit more <laughs> so you made quite a few now Lynn uh, they're all different sizes don't worry they'll be fine it's the pressure I'm putting you under okay and then finally you put, I know you can't really see this on camera because obviously it's at the back but I just want to finish it off at the back here okay and I'm going to turn that around so you can Ooh. see it so now I've got my light sort of cable on there I actually want to put the colorful lights on there and it doesn't matter how many you put on what order you know get creative put whatever you want on but I'm going to put on three on each swag like this and one also in each of these so Lynn I'm going to quickly count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I reckon about twelve, thirteen, you fourteen. Go. You've got I've I've got enough, haven't I? <laughs> right, okay. And then one here, one over here, and down here. Right. I think you've got enough shout if you need any. No, more. I think I'm fine. So all you do and these are nice and soft, so they kind of stick straight on, don't they? They're yeah. nice and, and pliable. So I'm gonna stick one and I'm actually gonna alternate the colours. So that's why you wouldn't make those in advance, would you? No, Keep them soft? I, I mean, yeah. you can make them in advance, but the only thing is if they're quite hard, it's not as easy to stick a curved, yeah. hard curved thing onto a curved thing, you know, because there's not much surface area to stick it onto. Whereas if you actually have it quite sticky like this and soft, you can kind of squeeze it on. I mean, we are doing this a little bit slapdash, obviously, but I'm not even doing it in, in uh, the right color order, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Okay, and then one over there, and then I'm just going to bring it round. What colour shall I do? Uh, blue. I've got much blue. Blue one round there, like that, and then one on his head, like that. <laughs> I think it looks really good. And then just a couple down here. If you can't see it, we'll turn it around in a second. I just want to get these on. And then just down at the bottom where they're all in a mess and in a tangle, which is basically my Christmas lights every single year. I never put them away properly. There we go. Oh, I think it looks brilliant. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So there we have the lights on the cake. So it's, it's sparkle time, it's now isn't it? It's snow bit. time. This is our favourite bit. This is bit. our favourite bit. Yeah. Okay. So. so the cake itself is effectively finished in terms of making the cake and making things. But now this is where it gets fun. Yeah. And actually, this is quite a good time to get kids involved. If you've got sort of young children who just like to throw decorations at things, way. this is what we're about to do. So we've got all different types of sprinkles, haven't we? I mean, this is my favourite. Well, what are we putting on first? Well, snow shall we do? Uh, shall yeah, we do should, we do, yeah. should we do a okay. few snowflakes? So these are snowflake sprinkles. Where's the snowballs as well? Oh, you got them. These, these snowballs. Yeah. Oh, we put them away. Here. Sorry, I want to have these on. I like these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I like the reason I want to have these on because this is his ammunition, isn't it? Yeah. So if you put a pile of them next to the the guys here that are actually having the snowball fight that's his little pile of ammunition ready to throw at his siblings like that that's how i look at it right so we just put yeah and then you can also stick a few on i mean you around. can you can add these with stick them on with yeah i mean glue. we're just sort of sprinkling them on now just for yeah. purposes of live camera work <laughs> you would normally glue them on wouldn't you yeah. in position okay so we've got our snowballs yep. which is the mimosa so balls. they're white mimosa sprinkles yeah. So then we've got our snowflake sprinkles you can buy. Yeah, you yep. can buy. The, these are brilliant, aren't they? Because you yeah. can literally buy them as they are. They're great for cupcakes as well, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Any, any, any Christmassy cake. stuff. Yeah. So we just sprinkle them on. Again, you, you, you can take your time take and your add, time, glue add them, them on. on with glue. Yeah. I'm, I'm the child here. Right, I'm okay. the one that's throwing it all on. Okay. Then we've got so many different sparkles and edible glitters. You don't have to use them all. No, we just want to show you. So there's, I'll give that to you to show at the camera. So then there's magic sparkles yeah. and they come in all different colours. These are magic sparkles. Yeah, these are amazing. They're quite sort of like, a bit like holograms. I think that's the word, hol hologram. Yes, they're really sparkly, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're really nice and sparkly. They're like little flakes, aren't yeah. they? I'm just going to throw some of these. You put some of those on. Okay, I'll thanks. put some of these on. <laughs> I like these. So you just pinch just pinch and then just yeah and they're quite that. big actually you can sort of you can grind them in your fingers can't you you know they're quite chunky and if you want that big flaky effect it's lovely but if you want to just sort of grind them in your fingers a bit you can get a much finer kind of look okay i love the i love these right but 
Your favourite. I'm my favourite. I know to do this. I know. This is so my favourite. So this is called, let's get this right, it's sparkling deco powder. So it's basically glittery icing sugar. So you can use this on cupcakes. You can even put it on hot chocolate. They actually do a chocolate one as well. So we've got the chocolate one so and the white one. you can have a blinged up hot chocolate. Yeah, you can. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So love you love idea. this, don't you? Right, the reason I love this, because I like to create a snow drift effect. Yeah. So I just... Just throw it on, <laughs> just throw it on and it creates a drift effect. And there, obviously be careful when um, going near your letters, you don't want to like cover your letters up. And then on top, you can actually have it so the snow. So it suddenly looks like all the penguins snow's are covered in snow. Down. He's covered in snow, yep. he's covered in snow. I love it. <laughs> so, and then we've got one lasting one last one. edible glitter white square squares. And these are really glittery too, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So. I really I, I'll go, I'll, yeah, no, you yeah. go. I've been a bit So I think um, I'm just going to put selfish. these around the writing. Look at so that. you can use any of these sprinkles, sparkly icing sugar. Yeah, you don't have to use them all. <laughs> <laughs> just like, but it's we too, it's to. too easy for us. We just walk out that door and go out to 9,000 9, products and behind walk, us. And walk along and go, just use everything. everything. Yeah, so, yeah. so you can use any of those. Yeah. But um, that's it, isn't it? That's yeah. actually the finished... Our finished um, cake. What do you think? I think it looks amazing, doesn't it? It does. And, and do you know what? Even if you're a beginner and you've never made a cake before, I think that's a really good one to start with, isn't it? Because it's snowy. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And, and again, the modelling, they're really cute, but simple Well, it's to do. a basic introduction into modelling. It's really, really simple, really effective. And also, if you want to, you can personalise the penguins to own members of your family. You can put like <laughs> a pair of glasses on one or like a hat if like a yeah. member of family has a specific hat they like to wear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope it's kind of encouraged you to get in the kitchen and get, get modelling, get cake decorating. Yeah, and don't forget, you know, if you put igloo in at the checkout you can get 10% off every single product we have so I think so well it. I don't know I mean if we've done a really really good job today and explained everything really well we won't have any questions however uh, we might have some questions do we have any questions someone's been answering them all someone's been answering someone's them all. That's amazing. Oh, well, that's efficiency, yeah. isn't it? That okay, well, that's great. Well, that's <laughs> great then. Oh, do you know what? I just want to say one more thing. We have a great customer service team here. We have Kate and Grace. Yes, we have, we have online chat. So any questions you've got, you can go onto YouTube. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagram. Yeah. But we've got the lovely ladies next door that will help you through orders. Or if, you, if you've got a question about a product, you can ring up or you can go on live chat. They're, 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 they're really friendly. They'll give you loads and loads of advice, help you, guide you with what to buy if you've yep. got a specific pro project. Um, and um, one last thing, if you subscribe to the newsletter, then if it went well today, we'll be doing another one, maybe in a month's time. So, yep, subscribe. And, then and you'll, uh, you'll get a notification, won't you, on the newsletter to when we're doing the other one. Actually, I just want to say one more thing, because usually I'm that side of the camera directing and um, we've worked lots together, but we're both chatterboxes. So I didn't, we didn't do too bad chatting over each other. We were quite worried about that. We were, weren't we? No, yeah. I think we did all right. Yeah. Actually, we'd really like your we're feedback. We're doing it now, though. We no, need to say goodbye. Okay. Yeah. All, right, say okay. all right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.